Okay, so if you've been following along with the tutorials for a while here, you know that we've been developing some techniques with topo solids and 3D printing, and at the same time, we've been developing um, this micro house project as well. And I find myself doing this often in Revit, and this is a method, method I often teach as we're trying to learn and grapple with the complexities of building and design. And that is that we have a model, a Revit model, that has started independently of the topography file, okay? Um, not that we shouldn't like start with those things together, but especially as you are learning, sometimes there's just so much data to wrangle that it can be a little bit difficult to get things moving while trying to manage a great big site. So if the site has been developed correctly, let's just look at this in 3D. So this is the typical way that we do site development with the satellite photograph and coming out of format um, with a stand-in object, which is this little component right here that represents the object, somewhere close to 000 in Revit's Cartesian coordinate axis system, which is between the default elevation targets, right? So my building site is roughly there. If I look at my microhouse model, that is also roughly in that location. Let's delete this section really quick here. We'll use that in just a minute. Um, so both of those things are kind of roughly together, and that includes the elevation on the topography. All those things have been set roughly together. It doesn't mean that things are going to be perfect as I start to merge these files, but it really, really helps if I can get those things roughly working together. So um, as Revit works, we do not move the building to things, we move things to our buildings. Revit, in the Revit world, uh, the building is the center of the universe, and so we need to both behave and follow Revit's rules on that, okay? So my site does have a road, um, and it does have a driveway, and it does have this little stand-in, and what I want to grab is the topo solid, the road and the driveway. I want to take all three of those. I don't want anything else. I don't want my little stand in. I don't want levels, anything like that. So just I'm methodically selecting only the parts that I want to carry over. From there, I'm going to use copy, but I'm not using the copy around a view. I am copying to clipboard, and that's going to let me move Revit objects from Revit project to Revit project without having to go through making a family or something crazy like that, right? So I'm just going to go copy to clipboard, and then I'm going to go to my microhouse project and my microhouse site. It's probably easiest to see this happen in 3D, so we'll just kind of do it from here. So I'm going to go to the modify, paste, and if everything was generally lined up between those two, I'm going to go paste a line to picked level. So once I activate that, activate that, I can pick my level zero and say okay to all of those things. And it's going to import that site. Again, not precisely, you can see I've got things that I need to work through, but very, very close. I'm not having to move things miles, I'm only having to move them feet, which is really convenient. So next, let's go to the site. And I've got my site set to wireframe, so I can see the guts of everything, which is going to help me. I'm going to select my topo solid, and I'm going to move this edge of the driveway to that edge of my building. So I want to get things aligned in the X, Y, or horizontal plane first. So move that endpoint to that endpoint. Great, and let's check that in 3D. Fabulous, so that's coming in underneath this micro house right where I wanted it to. Next, I need to go back to my site, and I'm going to cut a section, and I usually try to run these um, perpendicular to the slope. It's just a little easier to visualize if we do that. So I'm cutting a section looking across. Um, let's go to that section view here. Uh, and it's huge because it's picking up all of the site, uh, and my hill goes way, way up. Let me just compact this in so it's a little easier to see. And then we can see how much I need to move my site down, which, again, is different than what we think in the real world, but this is the Revit world. It's all good. We're not going to move the building up. I'm actually going to take the site. I'm going just above because, again, I'm still working rough, 
not ready to think about grading too much, but I'm going to move my site just below my entry level. Okay, so my main top of my topo line where I cut that section is now just below. So if I look at that in 3D, I've now got that working pretty nicely. I'm going to see a little bit of a gap right here, which I'm not too wild about. Uh, and again, I'm not ready to detail out this with foundations, modeled foundations and stem walls. I would say a lot of times I don't even model those anyway. That's something I'll pick up in my two-dimensional drawings. So just for the purpose of rendering that kind of stuff, I typically take that floor and I'm just going to edit its type and duplicate it and we'll call this slab on grade. Let's say OK. And I'm going to edit the structure. This is a total cheat, but it's a good cheat. I'm just going to make it very thick. Okay, so I know that that's going to project down because it's a floor, and that's going to fill any of those gaps so I can get right to rendering and visualization. And then I know if I go back to my section, yeah, I'm going to see that great big block, but that gives me something to indicate so I can start using my detail and annotation lines, that kind of work to, to fill all those gaps in uh, and not necessarily worry about modeling those elements right now. So from here, Let's go back to our 3D view. This is ready to push to twin motion. So that next step is simply going view, twin motion, open and twin. In general, if I'm starting something new, I'm going to accept the defaults. First thing that I always do in twin is get rid of the starting base stuff delete and delete and now I have my building and my site ready to start doing some basics with and the two basics that I always start with I've got to replace the glass because the Revit glass is not good materials ground plane usually the grassy ground with a slightly larger scale Looks. Come on, grassy ground. Materials. Details. Well, where's my scale at? Oh, it's under UV. I, sh I should know that. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Turn, turn that up to about two, which again does not look good from a high uh, because the tiling's too aggressive. But once I get down in the space, it looks good. And I know I'm going to populate the, this with trees and a lot of stuff. Um, and then let's get this driveway and road taken care of with a little bit of concrete. Um, and again, just the concrete that's going to start looking good. Um, I also know I'm not wild about this popping up this much. But once I start putting grass and stuff around on this, it should start coming together really, really nicely. So that is essentially how I start getting my Revit file dropped in um, and combined with the topography and then get that pushed over to twin so I can start visualizing while I'm designing. Cheers all.